In Attack of the Clones, Obi-Wan was tasked with tracking down the mysterious bounty hunter that he believed was responsible for the assassination attempts against Padme, and he stumbled upon the clone army being grown on Kamino. Secretly ordered by Jedi Master sifo ten years earlier in the name of the Jedi Council, but truly under the manipulations of the Sith, the clones were to serve the Republic should a large-scale conflict arise in the galaxy. Obi-Wan was shocked and confused as the Kaminoans showed him the army and gave him a tour like they were expecting him the entire time, and he reported back to the Jedi Temple as quickly as he could. One of the most interesting parts in the novelization of Attack of the Clones is his thoughts while he's on Kamino. It turns out Obi-Wan was actually very bothered by what he saw, and he didn't agree with cloning in the first place, or the way that the Kaminoans treated the clones. Like I said, Obi-Wan was immediately confused when he arrived on Kamino, since Tan Wee said they were expecting him. He simply played along as if he knew what they were talking about when they referred to the clones as units. When the Prime Minister Lama Su mentioned sifo Obi-Wan became even more confused, but he put his questions out of mind because he wanted to keep the Kaminoans talking. He told them that sifo had been killed 10 years earlier, and he learned that the Jedi Master had ordered an army of clones. Obi-Wan wondered if that were true, why hadn't Master Yoda or any of the other Masters said anything about it? sifo had been a powerful Jedi before his untimely death, but would he have acted alone on an issue as important as this? He wondered if Yoda or any of the Masters even knew about this supposed clone army for the Republic, or if the Senate even knew. The Kaminoans took him through the facility, where great racks holding glass spheres stretched across the immense room to the end of Obi-Wan's vision. Each sphere contained an embryo, suspended in fluid, and when Obi-Wan reached out with the Force, he sensed strong waves of life energy. The Prime Minister explained that the clones could think creatively and were immensely superior to droids. Kaminoan clones were the best in the galaxy since their methods had been perfected over many centuries. He mentioned to Obi-Wan that they used accelerated growth methods so the clones could be fully matured in just over a decade, which troubled the Jedi greatly. 200,000 units ready with a million well on the way. Lama Su's previous boast echoed ominously in Obi-Wan's thoughts. A production center, supremely efficient, producing a steady stream of superbly trained and conditioned warriors. The implications were staggering. Obi-Wan stared at the closest embryo, floating contentedly in its fluid, curled and with its little thumb stuck into its mouth. In ten short years, that tiny creature, that little person, would be a soldier, killing and likely soon enough killed. He shuddered. When Lama Su told him that there were units started 10 years ago when the order was first place, the callousness of it all struck him. Units, final product, these were living beings they were talking about. Living, breathing, and thinking. To create clones for such a singular purpose, under such control, even stealing half their childhood for efficiency, assaulted Obi-Wan's sense of right and wrong. The fact that a Jedi Master had begun all of this was almost too much for him to process. The tour took him through the commissary, where he saw hundreds of adult clones eating. They were definitely disciplined. Lama Su said that was the key, that they be disciplined yet retain the ability to think creatively. He said that sifo had told them the Jedi would not lead an army of droids and could only lead life forms. Obi-Wan wondered how sifo or any Jedi could have so willingly and unilaterally crossed the line to create any army of clones. The culmination of the tour came when they took to a balcony overlooking thousands and thousands of clone troopers, dressed in white armor, marching and drilling with incredible precision. Obi-Wan looked up at Lama Su and saw his eyes glowing with pride as he looked out upon his creation. 
There were no ethical dilemmas as far as Lama Su was concerned, Obi-Wan knew immediately. Perhaps that was why the Kaminoans were so good at cloning. Their consciences never got in the way. Yes, the clones were magnificent, and Obi-Wan could only imagine the brutal efficiency they would exhibit on the battlefield. Once again, a shudder coursed down his spine. For the first time, he appreciated Senator Amidala's crusade to stop the creation of an army for the Republic. So I really love this little chunk of information that's present in the novelization. I think it's great characterization for Obi-Wan. I really like that it shows that he's compassionate. It reminds me a lot of Qui-Gon and just how he cared about people and it shows that Obi-Wan cares about the clones. And I wanted to make this video just because the book, The Secrets of the Clone Troopers just came out. And for those of you who don't know, there was discourse surrounding there being a trans clone trooper named Sister. And I guess a lot of people just found out about the character even though she was introduced a couple years ago in multiple books. Uh, I read the book Brotherhood a couple years ago and she makes like a very brief appearance in that book. And people have been arguing about it on Twitter and stuff. And uh, there's been some people saying that all the clones are supposed to be the same and they're clones and they're not supposed to be individuals and clearly that's not the point of the Clone Wars. There, there's literally the first episode of the Clone Wars, Yoda talks about how the clones are individual people, they're very different in the Force and they have their own personalities and stuff and that's a big message of the Clone Wars is how they have their own personalities, they get nicknames, they're very unique just because they're clones and they have the same face. Uh, that's why they have unique hairstyles and they make unique haircuts and call each other different names and stuff. And, you know, there's the episode of the clone who goes off and starts a family. And, you know, there's that episode where the clones get trapped with Plo Koon in the ships in outer space after the battle. and. The clones say that they're dispensable, they're just made to be destroyed or whatever, they're all the same, and Plo Koon says not to me. So other Jedi too also saw that the clones were people, I mean even in Legends like years ago, um, in the comics Anakin was giving them nicknames because they were individuals and he could see that they were their own people and stuff, so I mean the novelization of Attack of the Clones is from 2002 when the movie came out and it was establishing that Obi-Wan was already seeing that this was wrong, they are people, this whole process of creating a clone army is wrong. And I really like that it kind of challenged the ethics of it. And then obviously the Clone Wars show explored more of that. So I thought that it was relevant to this kind of discourse that's going on about the clones and, you know, the trans clone character sister and stuff, which I think the discourse is just ridiculous, you know? I mean, I feel like... The character came out a few years ago, I read about her in the book Brotherhood, I thought, okay, cool, and then I read the rest of the book and went on with my life. But I guess a lot of people found out about it now with the, the book Secrets of the Clone Troopers coming out, and it was a big, big argument thing, like even TMZ reported about it for some reason, so I don't know. That's why I wanted to make this video, because I thought it was interesting. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe if you did, and as always, may the force be with you.